right. Good morning, good morning everyone. Ms. Anita, since uh, the one short form, we'll just jump right into the presentation. We're not avoiding, avoiding on any. Uh, Roll call. Council Member King. Here. Council Member Moreno. Council Member Jeruso. Council Member Morrell. Here. Council Member Harris. We do not have a quorum. For well, the record, I want to acknowledge Council Member Eugene Green, who is present. All right. So today we have a very special community development meeting. Um, we, where we are honoring Camellia Beans for their 100th anniversary. And uh, Camellia Beans started in District C in the French market. So it's only fitting that me being a council member of District C that we are going to honor, uh, that I'm going to lead the way, lead the charge in honoring Camellia Beans. Uh, we're going to have a uh, presentation, a short film, and we get started with introducing our guest speakers for today. Uh, first, we're gonna have Mr. Vince Hayward. You can come to the, to the desk, Mr. Hayward. Mr. Hayward is the CEO of Camellia Beans. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you everybody for allowing us to be here today. It's uh. It's Monday and that means red beans and rice. And I think if you ask most citizens of New Orleans that question, that's would be their answer. Monday is red beans and rice day. It's an iconic dish uh, and part of our, part of the culture and just part of the fabric of our city. Um, very fortunate to be uh, CEO of Camellia Beans, a, a company that we're celebrating a hundred years. And my primary mission in life is to make sure that we're never on the ain't there no more list. Um, we've been around for 100 years and my job is to make sure that we make another 100 years. So thank you so much for um, uh, acknowledging that, uh, Council Member King. And just a, uh, real quick before um, I let you kind of talk more about what we're doing here today. But uh, one of the great things about this dish is, is that, it, that it's uh, uh, um, sort of inextricably tied to one of the greatest cities in the country. And uh, that's New Orleans, of course. And um, it's a, it's a, really, it's a, it's a, a blank canvas, a palette for all chefs and cooks to put their, um, put their signature on. And, and, and I think most of us have an idea of what we consider uh, what a great dish of red beans and rice is. And, and that most likely came from either your mother or your grandmother or somebody that you really cared for. It's also a dish that crosses all economic and social boundaries. And it's a, uh, and for that reason, I think it's a, just a great uh, way to, um, uh, it's a great opportunity to tie to, to, a, to a city that represents all of those things. So again, thank you so much for having us today and um, we'll let you take it from here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hayward. We have some more guests at the, at the table in front of us. I asked them to introduce myself from left, from their left to right. Hi, my name is Joe York. I'm a filmmaker. I had an opportunity to work with Camelia on the film that we will see later today. I'm Poppy Tooker. I'm the host of Louisiana Eats and a local cookbook author. And I am one of the lucky participants in the film today. I'm Edgar Duke Chase, owner of Chase Hospitality Group and the new restaurant right across the way, chapter four, as well as the executive chef at Dookie Chase Restaurant. And I'm Vance Volkerson, owner of Volkerson Sausage Company and the new owner of Volkerson's Creole Cafe, in partnership with Duke Chase, and uh, trying to uh, show the importance of sausage along with that red beans. <laughs> they go hand in hand, ex exactly. Uh, so our next, we also have um, Mr. McNeely of Inspire, C, uh, Inspire Charter Schools. He isn't here yet. When he comes, he'll join us at the, at the desk in front of us. Um, so next we'll have Mr. Uh, Edgar Duke Chase to explain to us, explain to us, uh, you know, just how much red beans means to the to the Chase family, to the tra to, to the Chase tradition. Yeah, and, and 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 I think Mr. Hayward said it said it correctly as you talk about first congratulations to Camellia Beans on a hundred years of success. Thank you, sir. And I wish you a hundred more years, but 
the main thing that he touched on and, and what we say as a family in terms of continuing a legacy is making sure that we continue the same traditions and culture that was here before us that's passed down to me in the fourth generation. And as I understand it, you all are in your fourth generation as well. Uh, but that is key to this city. You know, as we grow up and, and fall in love with this city, the same people that visit this city and stay and fall in love, they fall in love because of our traditions, our culture, our people. And camellia beans on a Monday, yes, we love it on a Monday, but we cook beans every day. When I think of beans, I, th I think not only of home, but I think of family gatherings, right? We just celebrated Mardi Gras. I bet at every party, they had red beans and rice. Right. You celebrate all your family gatherings, just like we have gumbo, there's red beans and rice. Even when we're going home at a repast, guess what's going to be on that table? Red beans and rice. So that speaks to the tradition and the culture and how important one dish is and how important food is in terms of bringing people together and make sure those traditions in that culture carries forward into the next generation and the next generation. So not only can they sustain their business for another 100 years, we certainly want to sustain our business for another 100 years. And we want those traditions of our kids and great grandkids to share in those same stories that we all grew up with and love. So thank you for being a part of that tradition. Thank you for helping preserve that tradition and culture. And let's keep going. Thank you, Duke. That was very kind. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Tucker. If Thank you, you. If yeah. you can ex uh, explain to us a bit your connection with, with the Camellia Red Bean. I'm happy to do that. I, um, again, I'm Poppy Tooker, host of Louisiana Eats, and I'm a lifelong New Orleanian. And I have a love for this city that runs so deep. It's like family to me. And the reason that I'm here is because I loved Camellia Beans and the L.H. Hayward Company because they were a constant in my family's kitchen from my great grandmother's days on. And this weekend, as part of this wonderful kickoff that we are doing today with this beautiful film, I'm, I've got a radio episode all about Camellia Beans. Now, a lot of people, when they reach that centennial, it's all about the company. It's all about marketing. And the reason I'm here today is because when it comes to the Hayward family and their company, it's not about that at all. If you listen to Louisiana Eats this weekend, you are going to hear an illustration of how the generations of love that the city of New Orleans has showered on red beans and camellia in particular, is not a one-sided love affair. This is a reciprocal thing. And so how does this company go about celebrating a centennial? They do it by illustrating in real visceral ways how much they love the community they've been a part of for 100 years and how much this community matters to them. So this weekend, for instance, you'll hear Natalie J. Rowe talking about the commitment of a million bowls of beans to Second Harvest Food Bank. And you will hear about the innovation going on in the L.H. Hayward development kitchens to continue to serve the very best beans. And the last thing I want to say is that while we have the tradition and the tradition is so important. If you just look around in new restaurants, you will find innovation happening with those beans as well. I was at a restaurant called Mamou, it's on Rampart Street. I was served a classic French cassoulet with red beans in it. And that was a tremendous surprise and it was a delicious surprise. So. That's why I'm here, just to love and honor them back the way they do with New Orleans. Thank you. And, and you can't have, the red beans are good, but it has to have its running mate. It has to have its, its, uh, its wingman. <laughs> and and uh, Mr. Mr. I can't say her name, Bokrasan. First try, right. go ahead, Mr. Right. 
<laughs> give us a, a little bit about your experience and and connection with the Camellia uh, Camellia brand and the red beans in particular. Well, also being a multi generational business, uh, third generation going into fourth generation, and again, Mr. Haywood, congratulations uh, for everything that's going on with your centennial. Uh, the one thing that the beans and I, and I know we're talking about the red kidneys, but we got to give some shout out to also the limas and the white beans, you know, because it's it's something that connects the city. And the one thing, even though the pride and tradition of this city sometimes is in competition based on if you're from the seventh, the ninth, the 13th, the sixth, the one common bond is everybody's going to cook some beans, especially if they're coming up in a marginalized situation and they may need to feed their family. The one thing all of all of the things that we did was we would cook beans to stretch that income to make that work. And sometimes we would brag about the different ingredients that we put in. Some people put in uh, the hocks or they put in the pickled pork or they put in the sausage or they put a side of fried chicken like they do at Dookie's. But <laughs> it's one thing is, is that red beans, camellia beans are synonymous with our culture, with our city and its history and its traditions. I'm so thankful that what we do, chorice, Creole hot sausage, has been a longstanding part of red beans. I remember one of the most influential people to put red beans on the map, Mr. Buster Holmes. I won't forget this historical figure who also participated with us at the first Jazz and Heritage Festival serving those creamy red beans. He really showed people that you gotta cream them beans, baby. And, 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 and to serve them with a flavor profile that has made it transcend throughout the international community because so many visitors have come down here and they now know what red beans is because of some of the cooks and some of the chefs that have put those dishes and their interpretations out for the world to taste. We're just thankful to be here. Our sausage will forever hopefully be a, a, a part of it, as well as chicken, as well as other proteins, but Camellia red beans and their traditions are here to stay for many traditions and many generations. And we're thankful to be a part. Absolutely. And you said a key thing, you got a cream of the bean. You don't want Everyone of the bean is is running off the plate. Put it back in the pot for a couple of hours because it's not ready. Not ready. You don't, you don't <laughs> want the beans rolling off the plate. You don't want that. Um. So, Mr. York, the film film director, uh, can you tell us what you learned about the city's connection and and, and love affair with the Camellia Red Bean Company and your, and your as you put uh, put together this documentary, this film. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, Councilman King. Thanks to everyone here at the table with me. Uh, about maybe a little over a year ago, I think it was around Christmas uh, a year back, I uh, first was contacted by um, Camelia and Simone to work on this documentary that we'll be showing here today. And uh, I have to say, uh, having worked with groups like the Southern Foodways Alliance over the past 20 years and doing documentaries about food and how food is emblematic of culture and place, I have never once seen a dish as connected to a place as red beans and, and rice and specifically camellia red beans are to this place as we see in the film in just a minute i think it will speak more eloquently uh than i can about the connection of of these beans to this place but i would like to say uh before we before we see it one thing that i i would like to call out about uh camellia and the hayward company is when they talked about celebrating their centennial. They didn't talk about shining a light on themselves and their accomplishments. What they wanted to do was to make a love letter to the city, to make a love letter to the culture uh, that has supported them for all this many years. And that is exactly what we will see in the film. I would like to say that no one makes a film alone. Everyone on this, on this table is uh, participated in the film and you'll see them all there. I would like to just do a shout out to everyone that was featured in the film from Dr. Jessica Harris, to Stella Chase Reese, to Edgar, uh, to Vance, Ryan Fertel, an excellent historian, the incomparable Poppy Tooker, uh, Lola Eli. We actually went out to Los Angeles and interviewed Lola Eli, who has a regular meeting of kind of expats from New Orleans in his home in Los Angeles for red beans. Uh, this is something that doesn't just exist here. People take it with them and they seek out Camellia Red Beans, they seek out the culture, no matter where they are. Uh, Pablo Johnson, who has a every Monday night standing Red Beans dinner here at his house on Daniil Street, uh, he is featured. 
uh, Liz Williams of Southern Food and Beverage Museum, an incredible uh, stalwart for the food traditions of this town. Felton Hurst, uh, a restaurateur over by the airport, an incredible, um, incredible man who you'll see on the film. Devin DeWolf, who founded the Crew of Red Beans and the, um, the Red Beans Parade, which we just had on Lundi Gras, an incredible gentleman. Uh, of course, I uh, want to thank uh, Simone for her role in this and her assistant, uh, Misi Cooney. I uh, also like to thank the Historic New Orleans collection. They were integral in a lot of the archival materials that we use here. What a great treasure for this city to have them as the keepers of so much of the evidence and photographs and all of those things that tell us the story of how long this has been associated with uh, the city, Red Beans, that is. Uh, also, thanks to the Times-Picayune uh, for the same. We received numerous photographs from them that we see here in the film. And I just want to say that as we show this film, there are pots of red beans simmering all over the city. There are crock pots. There are, uh, there are, you know, everywhere tonight when we get done with this and we go home, people will be coming home from work and sitting down um, to those dishes of red beans. And it's really the people of New Orleans that we should thank for this because they do the everyday work of keeping the culture alive. It's one thing for us to make films. It's one thing for us to sit here and, and talk about it, but the people that really keep this alive are all of those folks that are gonna go home tonight and sit down to camellia beans, hopefully some Vaucresson sausage and, um, and some rice. And they are the ones that keep this culture alive. So thank you to city of New Orleans. Thank you to the council members and thank you to all of you here. Um, and I hope you enjoy the film. Thank you. Before we get to the film, we'll get some comments from the dead, starting with Councilman Green, working his way down to me. Well, certainly I'm looking forward to the film, and I may have something to say after the film, but I want to thank the Haywood family for um, your investment 100 years ago, starting in the French Market Corporation, um, or at the French Market. Um, certainly a big part of the traditions in New Orleans, and I'm glad to see my couple of friends on the end participating in, the, <laughs> in this presentation and also what they do for the restaurant world. Um, just in general, it's just a pleasure to live in New Orleans for a variety of reasons. One of those reasons is the traditions that we have here. Of course, we experienced great traditions recently with Mardi Gras, with all of the toasting of things, with all of the activities that we had, but also the way that we eat is part of the tradition that makes our city enjoyable. Um, not only do we look forward to red beans on Mondays, but we look forward to red beans throughout the week. And, um, just beans um, are so important to our staple. I will tell you that I'm going to laugh with you and tell you, I want you all to consult on this. The jury is still out on red bean ice cream. I don't know about that. I don't know. I've gone to places where <laughs> <he's looking. laughs> that's nobody's invented here, but we'll see. I think it's pretty good sometimes. And then it should be unlawful when you go to other cities, they say we have New Orleans red beans and rice on the agenda and they put rice and then they put beans in a hole right next to it and say, this is New Orleans red beans and rice. We have to talk to some federal officials about it. <laughs> that is not red beans and rice, but okay, you can get away with it in other cities. But no, just really, and, um, just as we laugh, it's just a pleasure to know that a hundred years ago, um, you started in the French market and you're still here. The Haywood family, um, the camellia beans, I know when, I always, I kind of asked, asked in the past why it was named Camellia, but I understand that the Haywood family grandmother enjoyed the Camellia flower. So that's um, also just something. You've also helped the, the rice industry of our state. That's an important staple here in our city and state too. But just in general, thank you for your investment. Thank you for celebrating. Look, you won't see me this weekend just because my daughter is getting her white coat She's in medical school. I'm so excited about that. So I'll be there celebrating with her. But the very fact that you don't see me this weekend won't, won't mean that on Monday I won't be eating beans. I will absolutely do so. I thank you all very much for your investment and for being here and for being such a part of the fabric of our culture here in New Orleans. Thank you to all of you all. That was very kind of you to say. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll be relatively brief. I'll start with you know something is really ingrained in the fabric of a community when you can go to any New Orleans public school on a Monday and everyone knows what will be on the menu. I mean, so our kids from when they're the smallest to when they are the oldest, that is one of traditions of tradition when even government is kind of 
resigned itself to the fact that everyone expects their red beans on a Monday. Um, I do find it interesting. This could also hurt your business model. Whenever I go around the country, and I remember at one particular time I was in Gulf Shores and I saw red beans on the menu. And just as a joke, I ordered it. I said, oh, red beans. And they give you the sad little soup with like four beans in it. Mm. And I remember I, I was in college and I, I raised my hand and the waitress came over. I said, I, I can't eat this. This is not red beans. She said, well, this is red beans. And I said, it's not. She goes, where are you from? And I said, New Orleans. She said, we'll give you your money back. <laughs> and, and I don't know if that's because they're trying to avoid paying you full price for an actual bowl of red beans. <laughs> but it is amazing how when you travel this country, there are different interpretations of it. And obviously, it has an impact across our nation, but there is nothing like when you're at home and you're experiencing the ultimate comfort food for the city of New Orleans, which is absolutely red beans and rice. Mm -hmm. And you are so important to our community. Your family is so important to our community. And though we're here to celebrate your first hundred years, I mean, uh, hopefully I won't be here, but I'm sure the city will be celebrating your next hundred years as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, so I told the story when we had the, um, the partnership with Second Harvest, and I want to give Camille a shout out for providing all those those beans at the Second Harvest um, a couple about a month or so ago. In, in college, we were preparing for our tailgate, and college student, I was trying to get the cheapest of everything, cheapest of everything, and um, I picked up some generic beans and and a guy with me said man put those back we're from new orleans we only eat camellia beans so true story we put those beans back and got the camellia beans it was a little extra but it's, it was worth the cost and this morning as i left the house on the countertop next to the uh cutting board and the knife was a pack of beans bell pepper and the onion um right on cue you know just just how we do it in this city and um Camellia beans is a big part of the, the culture of this city. And it's, um, it's not just city, not just this city. You can go as far as my, my wife's family's from is uh, West Louisiana, Lafayette, New Iberia area. And they swear they cook beans better than anybody in the state. And on a Monday, they cook beans. I went to, uh, I remember going to a tailgate. I do a lot of tailgate. Did, uh, I went to a tailgate at ULL. Uh, University of Louisiana and Lafayette, and they were cooking beans and they put um, whole, whole jalapeno peppers in their beans. It's a different style of doing it. You go up North Louisiana, they'll do it a different way. You go on the West Bank, they do it differently from the East Bank. Everyone does it differently. They all are good. Um, and, and it's all, like they say, naturally New Orleans. Um, so before we get to the film, I want to just thank some people on my end, my staff, uh, Miss Eleanor Godin, who was an integral part of making this happen, putting this together. Uh, Mr. Charles Tony, Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel Knox, Landon uh, Williams, and Mr. Winston Fio all worked together along with Miss Simone to make this happen and to just show the city, young and old, how important and how integral the Camellia brand is to this city. So without any further ado, we'll watch the documentary and have a discussion following the video. New Orleans is a great food city for a variety of reasons. One of the dishes, though, that's certainly emblematic of New Orleans for many folks from New Orleans is red beans and rice. You know, in New Orleans, that's what we do on Monday. You don't think of having anything else but red beans and rice. So I grew up as a kid looking at my mom, Chef Leah Chase, cooking red beans and rice. And on Mondays, we knew what we were going to have. Nobody likes to start off the week on a Monday. But you come home and you got a wonderful, glorious pot of red beans. At that moment, when you take that first spoonful, you rest and you know that you're home. Anybody who grew up in New Orleans has that indelible red bean 
burned into their taste memory from the very earliest age. When I used to come home from college, my grandma would always make me red beans and rice. That was her way of saying that she loved me and she was welcoming me home. It's like a big pot of love. That's all it is. <laughs> and it's like mother's milk, you know? If you get used to it, then, hey, you want to stay on it for the rest of your life. <laughs> That's what it's like. It's just good for you. Those red beans just show up all over the place. If it's a Super Bowl party or a carnival event or the day after the hurricane, red beans will be there. They're just a perfect community food. And those red beans and rice have been here a while. They're just woven into the fabric of this place. Louis Armstrong, who signed his letters, Red Beans and Rice Lee, yours, loved red beans. And that was his way of acknowledging his love of the beans, but also his love of the dish and specifically his sense of place. The argument can be made that red beans and rice should be named the national dish of New Orleans, you know, if that makes sense. Willie Mae Seaton, one of the most famous Black restaurateurs in the city, uh, famous for her fried chicken, but also for her red beans. She called this a, a red bean city. And she was quoted as saying, like, if you ain't cooking red beans here in New Orleans, you're out. Buster Holmes built a career serving red beans. This is an essential dish to New Orleans. Red beans is one of those dishes that not only is evocative of New Orleans, but a specific rhythm of New Orleans. It ties you into the cultural rhythms of this place. This goes all the way back. This goes all the way back to the, to the beginning of the city. In the Caribbean, the culinary tradition is to red beans. If you look at the beans in Jamaica, it's kidney beans. If you look at the beans in Haiti, it's kidney beans. And so you've got this line of red beans that comes all the way through the Caribbean and into New Orleans. The population of the city doubled when the Great Revolution happened in Haiti, and they were bean eaters. They're very similar to our red beans, but I am certain that it was with those Haitian refugees that the bean firmly established itself here in the city. Red beans and rice was so important and so special here in New Orleans because we served it on a Monday because on Monday, a lot of people did their laundry. And of course, we didn't want anything that would maybe scorch if we didn't watch it or if we let went out to hang your clothes up on the line, that they still would be good on a slow fire. So the red beans and rice and the Monday morning laundry goes hand in hand. We're talking about a dish that is, for want of a better word, a heritage dish. It's a dish that people feel deeply about. It's a dish that people are connected to. It's a dish that for many people who grew up with it means home. And for people from New Orleans, it's camellia beans. People don't just want red beans. They want camellia red beans. And they call them camellias. I mean, that's just the way we talk about it. Camellia is ubiquitous with New Orleans, just like red beans and rice, the dish is. It is one of those brands that really is like a cultural signifier associated with the city. The brand Camellia really began in the French market in New Orleans. One of my grandfathers had a booth there. As time went on, it was really a demand for beans. And we began to specialize in beans. Because beans are really all we know and all we've ever done. And as a family and a company that's been doing this for a hundred years, we're not just a brand. We're really a part of a culture and part of a city. And it's something that we take very seriously. When you sit down to a plate of Camellia red beans with a little bacon and smoke sausage, you in hog heaven. It's, it's just good. It's good. So you, it's good for you, it's good for the mind, good for the soul. Definitely camellia's beans, you know, that's something we grew up using here in this city, something we grew up using here in this restaurant. And those beans, you know, you don't have to do much to that, right? You don't rush a red bean, respect it and let it cook, right? And you just let it speak for itself. Then you put them on a plate and I'm telling you, it's home. You're tasting home every time. The kidney bean is something that really crosses all societal bounds. Rich, poor, black, white, like everybody eats red beans. That little red bean truly unites us all in every way. 
And that was never, never more evident than after Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina struck on a Monday. So one week later, things have settled at least to the point where you found many of your people, you have a sense of where you are, you realize you're not going home soon. Some friends were wise to rent two houses in Baton Rouge. And so they decided that they would gather all the people we knew who had fled to the Baton Rouge area. And we would have a red beans and rice dinner one week after Katrina struck. That was an act of faith in ourselves, an act of faith in our city, and reaffirmation of the strength and importance of our culture. Gathering then to share red beans and rice with other people from New Orleans was kind of like having communion in church. It's a reconnection of you with the community and with something more powerful than you as an individual. Ain't that many other places in this world, let alone in this country, when one dish can have so much meaning? Red beans and rice starts from a common place, but everyone has their own version, their own twist, their own interpretation. There are so many different ways to cook red beans. It ends up being, in a lot of ways, like your thumbprint. You can eat red beans in 10 households in the city, and they will all somewhat be different because some may add a little bit of this. Someone said, well, I put a little bit of that. And a lot of that is from a tradition, and they just want to participate in it so that they don't forget and that they remind themselves of the beauty of where they come from. I mean, everyone cooks red beans in a, in a single pot, right? It's a one pot dish. And most everyone uses the same kind of like common group of ingredients, but they all taste very different. So there's something about the city that is cooking the same dish, but creating an infinite variety of tastes and textures out of this very singular one pot dish. As long as you cook and have people over at your house, that's the whole point. How you get there is not the, is not the problem. When you make that pot of red beans, you're not just feeding yourself. You're bringing people to the table. You're bringing your family, your friends, and everybody else to the table to enjoy one great meal. Oh, whenever I cook red beans, the whole pot gone, because that's what they love. They love our red beans. Beans are a celebration of life in the sense that they're good for you, they taste great, and then you're with people that you really enjoy being with, doing something that you just love to do. That's eating a big bowl of red beans and rice. Excellent, excellent film, great job. Great job, Mr. Um, Councilman Green, any further comment? You know I have a further comment. <laughs> I told you that the movie was going to bring something up. I forgot to say this, but I want to um, say this for the Camellia family and for the um, Haywood family. I attended, I attended Harvard undergraduate. There were students from throughout the country who attended Harvard. And I just forgot, because it was 40 years ago, that one of the exciting opportunities for some of those students was to come to my room because my parents would send me camellia beans. And so I had an aunt who was from New Orleans, who's still in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and she was a great cook. So we actually had beans from time to time that I never got to try when I brought it because everybody else would eat them. <laughs> well, at the end of the day, that's my camellia story that the movie reminded me of 40 years ago. My connections to camellia were back then, those nice packs of beans that came in the mail they were used. Thank you for packing them the way you did, too. Appreciate that. I feel like we missed an opportunity to have you in the film. <laughs> Next hundred years, I'm going to be around. Yeah. We'll do a sequel. Yeah. Yeah. And next, we're going to briefly discuss uh, the Red Bean Month initiative. Um, that's we're going to go to different schools on the east and west bank of the district and, and share this video and share the history of Red Beans with the, with the children of the city. So they can understand how it started, how the Camellia Red Bean family started, and just how important red beans are to this city, specifically Camellia beans. A lot of times, uh, you know, our children live on this microwave society where they want things right now. They really don't understand or care to know the history behind it. But that's what this um, Red Bean Month initiative is going to do, to explain the history and the importance of and the cultural significance of the red bean and the Camellia Red Bean family as a whole to this city. Um, any other comments before we move forward? 
Mm, just real quick, um, Chef and uh, his restaurant, uh, Chapter 4, is uh, providing lunch for us today. Of course, red beans and rice. So you'll have an opportunity to uh, sample some food from his brand new establishment. It just opened uh, about a month ago, two months ago. Yeah. How, how long has it been open? Uh, since January 9th. So about a month and a half. A month and a half. So that's about a pound a week I've gained. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cooking some great food. Uh, I don't have to go all the way to, to, to Mid City or to Lafitte area for uh, some good food. I can walk across the street, which is good. So I can walk back and pretend I'm walking off some of the calories I just consumed. Um, but we have this proclamation from the city council to the Camellia family. We will all gather. Um, what is this called? What is this called? It's very cold right here. We'll all just gather on the floor to take a picture uh, once we read the proclamation. Let me, let me, let me read it real quick. Um, dated February 27th, Boris Camellia Beans, the iconic New Orleans base bean company is celebrating a century of excellence and tradition in producing and distributing red kidney beans. And whereas red beans and rice are a delicious and wholesome dish that has been a staple of New Orleans cuisine and culture for generations. And whereas Camellia beans has been a proud and enduring part of the city's cultural heritage by providing the essential ingredient for this beloved dish. And whereas the City Council of New Orleans recognizes the importance of celebrating the cultural and culinary traditions that make our city unique and vibrant. Now, therefore, it be proclaimed by the City Council of New Orleans that March 2023 is hereby declared Red Bean Month in honor of Camellia Beans and that the cultural importance of this, of the bean, of the red bean and rice. The City of New Orleans invites all residents and visitors to savor and enjoy this delicious dish throughout the month of March and encourages schools, restaurants, and community organizations to promote awareness of the cultural and historical significance of red beans and rice. We commend and thank Camellia Beans for 100 years of providing the finest red beans to the people of New Orleans and beyond and look forward to the many more years of delicious, nutritious food. Be proclaimed by the city of New Orleans that the city recognizes Camellia Beans, the iconic New Orleans based bean company, requested by myself and signed by every member of the city council. And we don't want to forget the red, we got the black beans, white beans, beans all, all of the beans in the, in the family. Uh, we want to thank you all for all you do for the city. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. They all yeah, so. Everybody right Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, everybody has to eat. Hi. 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Before we leave, before we leave for the day, um, there there is lunches outside. As, as mentioned earlier, uh, the Chase family, along with the Julia family, has prepared has prepared lunch and is outside. So if anyone wants to grab a dish, a, a bowl of beans, <laughs> um, by all means, meet us outside. And I make a motion to adjourn. If you need a motion, meet us adjourn.